meeting to order. This meeting is being recorded. There it is. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, welcome to the Amherst Historical Commission public hearings and public meeting on Wednesday, May 18th, 2022. My name is Jane Wald and as chair of the Amherst Historical Commission, I'm calling this meeting to order at uh, 6.37 p.m. Pursuant to chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting is being conducted by remote means. As no in-person attendance is permitted, uh, every effort is being made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time. Uh, in addition, this meeting is being recorded and minutes are being taken as usual. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so in the following manner. Uh, open the town's homepage on an internet browser, navigate to the town calendar at the bottom of that page, click on the historical commission meeting link, uh, Zoom and telephone connections and the meeting agenda can be found there. Uh, so we'll begin by taking uh, attendance by roll call. So board members, as you hear your name called, please uh, answer affirmatively or uh, uh, raise your hand. Uh, Patricia Ah, Present. Catherine Davis. Not present. Robin Fordham. I will come back to Robin as her her connection may be unstable at the moment. Oh, I'm here. I okay, got it. Thank, you. <laughs> right, thank you. Becky Lockwood. Present. Janet Marquardt is not yet present. Uh, Hetty Startup. Present. Jane Wald, I'm present too. Um, we have a, a, a very full agenda this evening with um, at least listed six uh, demolition permit hearings um, and another important item related to uh, the Jones Library Garden. So uh, it's a full meeting. Um, uh, so I'll try to sort of move us along uh, so that we can get to all of the agenda items. Um, because each of the demolition permit requests is a separate public hearing, we'll be going through an entire review process for each one. That means that there will be an opportunity for public comment for each of the applications. Um, so for members of the public, um, uh, as I just mentioned, um, there'll be an opportunity during each of the demolition review uh, hearings. Uh, and there'll also be a general public comment period um, there will uh, there will be uh, a comment opportunity uh, when uh, taking up the Jones Library uh, Kinsey Garden uh, agenda item also. Um, so uh, just want you to be aware that the commission will take note of comments, but um, may not necessarily respond to them during the public comment periods. Um, uh, those wishing to make a co public comment uh, may, may speak for up to three minutes or at the discretion of uh, the commission chair. So at those times, please indicate you wish to make a comment by clicking the raise hand uh, feature on Zoom uh, when those comments are solicited. Uh, and if you have joined the Zoom meeting using a telephone, please indicate you wish to make a comment by pressing star nine on your phone. And then the, the procedure is for you to identify yourself uh, by stating your full name and address and, uh, and then uh, put yourself back into mute when finished speaking. All right, so uh, moving on to the public hearings. Um, let's see, I'm going to first First, I think, uh, Ben, I think we need to establish our next meeting date. Is that right? For purposes of a- Correct. Uh, yeah, good, good thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so ordinarily, I think our next meeting date would be the third, uh, Wednesday, third Wednesday in June. Um, <clears throat> I think my, uh, presence is required at the planning board meeting on June 15th. Okay. Um, so I was going to suggest either June 8th or June 22nd as okay. the 
Next meeting date. I've got jury duty the eighth. Okay. So, um, let's see. Um, Pat, you're checking your calendar. I'm checking. I'm checking my calendar. Um, uh, the twenty second would work for me, as would the Tuesdays, the fourteenth and the twenty first. Mm -hmm. or, or the Thursday, the sixteenth, if we wanted to keep it in that week, but. Um, it's just it's just a suggestion that's all okay i don't have any conflicts with any of those dates i don't think right. yeah the um eighth or the 22nd is fine with me okay so sounds like becky you may have a problem with the eighth but the 22nd right. is all right yeah okay so um for purposes of bringing this group together for a quorum, why don't we set June 22nd at 6.30 p.m.? Okay. Okay. All right. Um, so having established that, um, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and begin with um, uh, 406 Northampton Road. Um, so in accordance with the provisions of uh, Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 40A and Article 13, demolition delay of the Amherst zoning bylaw, this public hearing has been duly advertised and notice thereof has been posted and mailed to parties at interest. The Amherst Historical Commission is holding this public hearing to provide an opportunity for interested citizens to be heard regarding the following demolition application request, and that is uh, 406 Northampton Road, parcel 13D, uh, 47, which is the Blip Realty uh, LLC, which is a request for full demolition of a circa 1900 wood frame single family farmhouse. Um, so at the request of the applicant, the public hearing on this demolition permit uh, is now open and will be continued to June 22nd at 6.35 p.m., which is we've just established as the date of the Historical Commission's next meeting. So con having continued that, um, we will look, uh, take up um, two Stanley Street properties. Uh, um, the same preamble applies, but since we have so many hearings, um, unless there's an objection, I will simply refer to Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 40A, Article 13 of the Local Zoning Bylaw. Um, and uh, we, this, this is a public hearing for 266 Stanley Street, parcel 18A6, uh, a request of David James for the full demolition of a circa 1860 wood frame single family farmhouse. Um, let's see. And 244 Stanley Street, parcel 18A5, request of David James for the full demolition of a circa 1940 wood frame two family house. Now this, um, because these requests, so Ben, perhaps advise me whether I've already messed this up, but because these requests are from the same owner and they are adjacent properties, shall we take them together? Although our discussion and decision needs to be separate for each property. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. I think that's fine. Okay. Okay. So we'll, um, we'll look at the two of these at the same time, but then okay. se separate votes on each of them. Okay. And I will um, bring the applicant into the Zoom room. 
All right. Um, and so for the public, this application and other historical information on the affected properties are available at the Document Center on the town website. And um, the simple procedure for this is that um, members of the Historical Commission have, uh, have this uh, documentation about the properties. We'll invite the applicant um, to make comments uh, supplementing the permit application and supporting materials uh, if desired. Uh, we'll ask uh, a town staff if they have any additional insights or information. Commission members will may wish to ask questions or make observations about a site visit. Um, there'll be a time for public comment. Um, then we will, I'll ask for a motion to close the public hearing, um, at which time the commission will begin deliberation of standards for significance. So when we close the public hearing, I can explain a little bit about the, the procedure for the standards for significance. So if, so I'm so sorry, uh, Jim, yeah. I, I've yeah. I've called you David James twice, or maybe three times, but um, but I, I know your name is Jim David, <laughs> so I apologize for that. And uh, ask if there's anything you'd like to add concerning your application. No, I'm all set. I think you I think we had a good meeting the other day. Okay, thank you, um, Ben. Is there anything else that's to our attention? Um, the only information I wanted to add was just, um, I did go through the, uh, history of the deeds for both properties and kind of jotted down the, the names associated with each property going back to the, uh, I think 1913 or so, uh, uh for, at least for 266, uh, 266 Stanley street. And, um, I passed those names along to folks at Special Collections at Jones Library to do some research to see if there were really you know, any significant figures associated with um, the properties. And you know, no, nothing really came up or, or popped up uh, as far as they were concerned. What, one thing of interest to me was, was there any affiliation with either of these properties with the uh, you know, um, fairgrounds that um, are on uh, Route 9 can kind of adjoin the the properties and I, I don't think there's a, an association between them um, so that was kind of my bit of historical research that didn't produce too much other than you know the 266 does date back to 1860 and 244 is um, circa 1940 so um, one of them you know is, is has a significantly older but, um, would it be helpful to uh, show any pictures? Why, yes, why don't we do that? And let's begin with uh, 266. No, uh, let's, let's begin with 244. It's the first on the, yeah, there we go. Yeah. On the agenda, yeah. So this is it from the road. Mm -hmm. um, so we can start if commission members have any questions for the applicant, I guess, or comments. Okay. Um, then are we uh, ready, for, ready for a motion? I could see if there's any public comment. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, of course. Yes. Is there any public comment about 244 Stanley Street? As a reminder, anyone who wants to make public comment at the bottom of your screen, there should be a little raise hand button that you can press and we'll unmute you and allow you to make a comment. All right, we have one comment. Okay, comment from Tom Harris. Hi, I, I just have a question as to how to access the documents. Uh, I've been able to, it's not really about the property, I just, but I'm uh, at a loss as to how to open documents that are on the, uh, 
that are particular to this uh, application. Yeah, yeah so um, Mr. Harris, I saw your email earlier and then I sent you the link for the meeting um, information or meeting packet. Sorry, I didn't elaborate further. I guess you would have had to kind of scroll through the um, historical commission meetings of 2022 and then to today's date and then um, the information for each meeting is, is within the packet listed for that date. Um, yes, I found, I found that information and I, I'm looking at the, at the log of documents and the images and so forth, but it's not, there's no explanation of how to open them. Okay, if you if clicking on them doesn't open them or? Right. You oh, interesting, okay. Hmm. Yeah, it might be interesting. Um, might, um, be and for, for what it's worth, I was um, trying to open them on Chrome on my iPad and I didn't even see a list of the documents, but I was able to open them with a different browser, so. Oh, interesting. <clears throat> Hmm. Well, I can have the I, I guess the IT department look into that because I've it's uh, working on my end. It might be a browser issue. Um, For what it's worth, I'm using Edge. Edge. Okay. Sorry about thank that. You. Yeah. Thanks. So perhaps Ben, um, maybe it, maybe we could put up the. The application mm -hmm. while yeah. we while we discuss we we'll consider okay um, are there any other public comments so seeing none um, is there a motion to close no we're not doing that we are we are considered, now we will consider 266 Stanley. And then after mm -hmm. we look at both of them, then we'll close the public hearing. Okay. Um, so the second property, uh, 266 Stanley Street is the full demolition of a, an 1860 wood frame single family farmhouse. And uh, Mr. David, do you have anything to say about um, about this property that you'd like to add to what we saw and discussed on the site visit? No, I, I don't think I need to add anything. So okay, thank you. Bigger questions, I'll be happy to answer them though. Okay. Um, and Ben, anything from what you described earlier applied to yeah. the property? Yeah, applied to both, yeah. Okay. All right, um, questions from commission members about 266 Stanley. No. Um, since I wasn't at the site visit, can anyone um, just briefly recap anything pertinent? Um, let's see. Uh, it's uh, 1860, one and a half story farmhouse that is currently a single family residence. Um, I believe we learned that it has a, uh, not a full basement, but a, uh, a constricted uh, dirt basement. Um, occasionally, perhaps some water mustiness. Uh -huh. um, the, uh, you know, to me, the exterior appearance of the house is that it's in good condition. Um, are, the, are the windows historic? I don't, I mean, from the, from the images here, I don't believe so. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. David, would you like to comment? No. The windows are not historic. They've been replaced. They're vinyl windows. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Becky or Hetty, do you have any other information for Robin? <clears throat> it's 
got a metal roof, uh, mm -hmm. an older metal roof. And do we know who it was built for? Um, the earliest name I saw on the deed was a Mr. Jeremiah Hart. Okay. Um, but uh, no further information about that individual. Okay. It, there are um, several nearby outbuildings. One is a small, fairly small structure that's mm. close to the house. Yeah. Um, that structure, the sheathing, it looks to be in very poor condition. Mm -hmm. um, and it's kind of patched. Um, you can sort of see some of the patching in this in this photo. Okay. Um, and I believe that was the I believe that was the only outbuilding directly associated with this with this uh, house. Is that correct, Ben? Correct. Okay. Okay. Um, so let's see. Um, then. So if we have no more questions at this point, um, I will invite public comment on 266 Stanley Street. Okay, um, then with no public comment, um, now we have seen both houses, uh, these two adjacent houses um, in this in this particular public hearing. So uh, let's, uh, if I could have a motion to close the public hearing, uh, then we'll take a vote on that and then move to um, our deliberation. I make a motion to close the public hearing. Seconded. Thank you, Hetty. Uh, all in favor with a visible show of real hands. Okay, thank you, that's five. Um, uh, unanimous to close the public hearing. All right, so now um, the commission begins its deliberation um, of the information received with the application and um, according to uh, standards for significance outlined in article 13 of the zoning bylaw. Uh, for benefit of members of the public attending this meeting, the historical commission's deliberations may result in one of three outcomes. So I'm just going to say this the first time for this public hearing, and I won't need to say it for the others, um, unless we have new attendees who would like to, to, to hear this. Uh, so one of the outcomes is a finding that the building is not a significant structure according to bylaw criteria. Uh, that means that essentially the demolition permit is approved. Uh, a second outcome is a finding that the building is a significant structure according to bylaw criteria, but that the proposed demolition would not be detrimental to the historical or architectural heritage or resources of the town. Um, in the case of that finding, uh, the demolition is essentially approved. A third outcome is a finding uh, by the commission that the building is a significant structure according to bylaw criteria, and that the proposed demolition would be detrimental to uh, the historical or architectural heritage or resources of the town. And in that case, uh, the demolition permit would not be approved and the historical commission would be asking for a, a, a delay in, uh, in demolition. So let's see. Um, all right, so let's take, Let's take 244 Stanley Street first. And because, so I'm going to um, go through the kind of the four major uh, criteria for significance. Uh, and there are subheads under those. Because we have so many 
um, hearings to get through this evening. Um, I think, uh, Ben, if you have those criteria handy. I do, yeah. Okay, if you could put those up on the screen, what I will ask of commission members is just to state if you uh, have a, uh, a concern about its historical importance for any of the subheads there, uh, its architectural importance or its geographic importance. And the reason I'd like to do it this way is so that for all five of these uh, hearings, um, we won't necessarily have to read through each and every criterion. Uh, but where there is, where you register a concern um, about any of these criteria, then we will slow down and we'll just take them one by one. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. Okay. So let's see. The. Um, <clears throat> All right, so review standards for designation as a significant structure enumerated in section 13.4 uh, of the zoning bylaw, meeting only one of the criteria is sufficient for designation as a significant structure. Um, so again, we're gonna proceed by subhead. So um, first is whether the uh, building is listed on or is within an area listed on the National Register of Historic Places or is the subject of a pending application for listing on said register. And the, uh, in the case of uh, 244 Stanley Street, um, it is not. Um, then we have a set of criteria under 13.410 of historical importance. So I will ask any commission member who uh, wishes to comment on that, just to raise your hand or I'll, you know, recognize you or... Um... Eddie, you look like you want to say something. <laughs> I do, and I have misgivings about what I'm going to say because it wasn't something I shared at the site visit, but... You know, this is a little house. It's almost at the corner of Stanley Street and, um, oh, Route, that's Route 9, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and there's a little grouping of houses around the edge of what you can see as the historic fairgrounds. And what's there now is allotments and open space and then a couple of different housing projects nearby. So it obviously, in 1860, was was its own little kind of neighborhood of houses. Um, and it, it emerged that Jim has lived here and his family have lived here for over a hundred years. Um, may I, I'm sorry to interrupt Teddy, but um, yes. just for clarity, we're talking about right now, we're talking about- Oh, the 1940 house, the sorry. The 1940 house, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> I'll then just, just, I'll zip my remarks and okay. I'll, I'll come back for the second house. Apologies. Okay. Apologies. Thank you, Jane. All right. Yeah. Mm. Uh, okay. Architectural importance. Uh, geographic importance. Okay. Uh, then, so um, let let's just go ahead with uh, a motion on that particular house, 244 Stanley Street. Um, if someone wish to make a motion about, um, about approving a motion permit? The, the 244 Stanley Street does not meet the criteria of a significant structure. And uh, there and therefore should be considered, the, the demolition request should be considered. I think- Do you need that, something different than that, Jane? Uh -huh. I think, I think that's just right, Pat. So, okay. 
I would just replace the word considered with approved. Approved. Yeah. approved. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, then. Is there a second? I second it. Thank you, Becky. And then um, we'll take a roll call vote. Um, and I'll start with Robin. Fordham. Uh, in favor. Uh, let's see. Hetty, start up. In favor. Patricia Off. In favor. Becky Lockwood. In favor. And Jane Wald, in favor. So the outcome uh, of our vote is that the building is not a significant structure and the demolition permit is approved. Uh, all right, so we'll um, go through those four criteria for 266 Stanley Street. Uh, again, it is uh, first criteria is whether it's listed on or within an area listed on the National Register of Historic Places uh, or is pending. And the answer to that is a no. Um, again, I'll ask if um, anyone has comments on the uh, various criteria under the heading of historical importance. And I believe that was an area you were interested in earlier. Hetty, would you like to continue? Just, just, um, <laughs> I think what's hard for me is to separate my professional perspective from my personal perspective. And when I mention my personal perspective, obviously it has absolutely nothing to do with why I'm on this commission or not. But one reason I moved to Amherst was because it was so beautiful and so historic and had such wonderful streetscapes and neighborhoods. And um, I knew that I could, it was walkable and that I would like to grow old here um, and that it had a lot of history. So I look at this little house and it's not in itself very distinguished. Um, and it doesn't really conform to any in and of itself architectural significance, but it is historically, kind of a, a, a piece of the story of this neighborhood of how this group of houses grew up around the fairgrounds, which, you know, was probably a pretty important thing in Amherst for, for many decades. Um, and personally, if I was buying in Amherst, this is exactly the kind of house I would like to buy um, with its beautiful picturesque Andrew Wyeth looking barn right next to it, even though it's <laughs> barely standing. Um, and, and I, you know, so I'm just, I'm just sort of, I just have really mixed, mixed thoughts about a building like this. And I, I wonder what can be discussed, you know, or thought about a little bit more about what could happen here. Um, in order to preserve what was the, the entrance to Stanley Street from one end, you know, rather than from, is it Southeast Street, the other end? Um, so I, I'm, I'm just sharing that. I, I realize it's a bit, a bit of a sort of left field kind of set of comments, but I'm, that's, that's who I am. Okay. I, thank you, Hetty. I'm going to recognize Robin, and then I have a thought about this historical importance. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, I was just going to say that I think um, my last semester of classes has really got me focused on um, aligning ourselves to you know, the, the, that if we're going to make a decision of significance here, we have to pick uh, one of these four areas under historic importance. I mean, I, I, um, I commis like, uh, commiserate is probably not the right word. <laughs> I relate to, to Hetty's comments, um, but I would say that, so that someone would have to make an argument that perhaps what she's speaking to it relates to the first to 134100 has character, interest, or value as part of the development, heritage, or cultural characteristics of the town of Amherst. 
the question is um, how much sustaining information do we need from, you know, from, from the record that Ben has looked at to really um, affirm that as, as significant. That's, that's what I would say under this particular heading that if there were more information there, or there was a sense, I know in the past, I think that we may have um, asked for a delay so that further research could be done in the fear that we might be missing something. Um, I certainly agree with the concept that small, um, you know, non high style structures are just uh, as legitimate for preservation, um, you know, if they fall under the right right category. So that's my contribution to the discussion. Okay. Um, so I think, uh, I think then uh, we should go through each one of these criteria so that all, all members of the commission can sort of express their sense of each one of these four. Um, so let's uh, let's begin uh, with uh, with the first one. The structure meets the criterion of historical importance if if it the structure has character, interest, or value as part of the development, heritage, or cultural characteristics of the town of Amherst, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, or the nation. Um, so uh, let. Uh, we'll just do this as a roll call, I think. Um, so I will begin with Becky. Would you, if you are prepared to. Mm. to um, I'm gonna say no. Okay. Um, then let's see, um, Hattie. Yes. Okay. Pat. You know, when I when I took a look at this property to, in person, um, I uh, the thought crossed my mind that it, that it's a farmhouse from the middle 1800s, and mm. there's a great history of farming in Amherst. Um, it's not it's not a house that stands out, you know, architecturally, but I think we need to at least acknowledge that there's some. Um, heritage in the farming mode of Amherst in the 1800s. Okay. So I guess, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm conflicted. Yeah. Um, and I think probably it comes down to no, because it doesn't, it doesn't have the property or the bearing of, of a farmhouse today. Okay. okay. Um, all right, and then Robin. Um, so I'm trying to look at this definition. I mean, I would agree that it's lost some of its integrity in relationship to its, um, to its surroundings. Um, I would say that it has character and interest uh, as part of the agricultural development of the town. Um, I also just want to remind everybody on the committee that this is where it sometimes gets confusing, where you feel like if you're uh, maybe if you're arguing that is significant, that you're that that makes it more difficult to allow for demolition. But that's not the case. Right. <laughs> so um, right. I'm, I'm going to say yes on this particular um, particular 134100. Okay. And then um, I, I too am going to say yes, uh, because of its origins in 1860 in this particular neighborhood and as a, a kind of uh, expression of agricultural culture. Um, so that is three yes and two no. So there, that's one, that's one area of significance. Um, the second, that the structure is the site of an historic event. And um, just again, kind of quickly, this time we'll start with Hetty. No. And Robin. No. Nope. Becky. 
No. Pat? No. And no for me. Um, next is that it is identified with a person or group of persons who had some influence on society. And um, I'll begin with Robin. No. Becky? No. Hetty? No. And Pat? No. And I am a no on that also. Uh, finally, exemplifies the cultural, political, economic, social, or historic heritage of the community. And I will begin with Pat. Um, I will say no because I don't think it exemplifies. That's a that's a good point. Uh, Hetty. Yes. Um, Robin. Mm, no. Um, Becky. No. Okay. And I am, I'm a yes on that. Uh, but we have now come out on this criterion with three no's and two yeses. So we are not, not considering that um, significant. All right, next, the next category is architectural importance. And um, I'll invite any comments from commission members who, uh, you know, you're looking at this, the uh, individual criteria and if you'd like to comment on any of those, I'll invite that. So hearing no, uh, no concerns about that, we'll look at the final group and that's geographic importance. And any comments from commission members? Jane, could I ask you to speak um, a little to the, the house's location to its surrounding area? So there's a special, there's, Fair, fair, and again, I wasn't at the site visit, I apologize. Um, there, there's a fairgrounds area. I'm assuming that the whatever farm this house was associated with or agriculture era, area is not distinguishable at this point. Would that be correct? I, I think that's my sense of it. Um, so Stanley Street, um, west of Stanley Street is what is now the Am Amherst Nurseries, I think that's the name of it, mm -hmm. um, which is a fairly large yep. uh, tract of land, which uh, apparently was location of the fairgrounds or the racetrack. Um, and I know, Ben, that you uh, had identified that. Um, so that area is, I, th I believe that this house where it's sited is not uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not sure it's immediately adjacent to the fairgrounds or the racetrack, but um, Ben, do you want to um, set me right there? Um, yeah, it is. It's kind of at an angle to the fairgrounds uh, or to the Amherst Nurseries property um, and kind of one corner touches the, the property. Okay. But the house itself has no historical relationship to that. That's correct. Uh, okay. All right. Um, thank you. I, I, um, only, as I understand it, only in the sense that they existed mm -hmm. at the same time. Right. Right. Okay. Um, then it appears we don't have concerns about its geographic importance. Um, all right, so we have, we have then found one that uh, the structure has met one criterion uh, of historical importance, that it has character, interest, or value as part of the development, heritage, or cultural characteristics of the town of Amherst. So we have a couple of choices here. So we, uh, well, we have a variety of choices actually, but um, uh, one is that we can 
we can find it significant, but not um, not necessarily impose a demolition delay. A second is that if we feel that we need more information, we can continue this hearing. Um, and a third, of course, is that um, we wish to um, work with the owner on finding some some other way to treat the treat the house um, within twelve months. So um, having having gone through this with a conversation about the historical importance, um, what what might you suggest? in terms of a motion or further discussion. Um, I was just gonna say welcome to Jan uh, for joining us. Um, and I think there's a under the Mullen rule for public hearings, um, since you've missed the kind of the first chunk of it, um, I don't think you're technically allowed to <laughs> contribute so welcome and but sorry you can't talk but we'll, we'll we obviously have a few more in the evening so well i'd um, i'd love to see a situation where the owner the property owner could go ahead with his plans for the property at 244 stanley street but that we might come back about 266, um, who was Jeremiah Hart? You know, how important was he to late 19th century Amherst? Um, uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, um, I know that the house is, itself has a dirt basement. Well, that just to me confirms its authenticity. It's final windows don't, but they could be restored and have wooden windows. Um, I've seen that happen <laughs> in other contexts. Um, it's just a very, I hate to use this word, but it's a very picturesque setting um, to drive onto this street from Route 9 behind a, a row of fairly a lot of foliage and trees and shrubs so that you're barely aware of it and then to just come into this neighborhood um, <clears throat> and uh, you know it's 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 its own little 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 area um, so I would love to see us just maybe just try and have some conversations about what might happen instead of demolition immediately. That's all I'm going to say. Um, Robin? Um, I think that I would, I, I mean, I think that the the building itself reads really well still as a farmhouse. The, the metal roof is, um, you know, is a really interesting piece. Um, it hasn't lost a lot of its integrity and, um, I, for one, would definitely like to know more about the history of the property. Um, yeah, um, I, I guess that, that's my feeling that um, I don't feel quite comfortable with a, a demolition at this moment. Hey, um, Becky? Yeah, I'd just like to ask if, if this is, I'm not sure this is appropriate, if the owner has looked into a restoration, the costs, how that would work versus a demolition. Okay, I see uh, Mr. David, your hand is up. So please, uh, please comment. The roof is currently failed. So that's gonna to need to come off and be replaced anyway, just to make that very clear. So that's how the roof is, 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 that's history. That, that's coming off, it needs to come off now. And, uh, the house itself, well, I'll leave it, you, you mentioned about the roof, but the roof is definitely well past its prime and is not 
um, a usable watertight structure anymore. So. Okay, thank you. Yep. Um, Robin, is that a, a, a new hand or a leftover hand? Okay. Um, okay, so I'm understanding the sense of the meeting is that the commission would, would, would like some more time to consider what they've identified as the character, interest, or value as part of the development heritage or cultural characteristics of the town uh, before proceeding directly to demolition. So there are two ways we can affect that. And um, one is uh, to delay approval of the demolition permit uh, for a certain period of time. Another is to continue the hearing, um, which does not, you know, we would need to continue the hearing to a date certain, which would naturally be, uh, well, the first opportunity would be our next meeting on June 22nd. Um, if our goal is to learn more about the history of the property, that's what I would recommend. Um, I think the last thing I might say is um, because we did not find any we did not have any concerns about geographical importance. I'm, I'm going to ask us not to really consider the setting and really to focus on, on the house. So, um, so those are, those are my thoughts and, uh, any other discussion about that? Any, um, formation of a, of a motion? Uh, Pat. I, I just have a question. Um, the site visit was to the exterior and now Mr. David tells us that the roof is going to need to be replaced if the house continues to stand. That that's not, that's not a feature that we can factor into our consideration. Um, but I, I guess my question is, is what condition is the interior of the house? Um, ben, are we, I mean, that may be a question of curiosity. Um, well, I'm not sure it's, that... it's just a question of curiosity only in that, that um, from the exterior, it looks quite sound. Mm -hmm. And so I, I guess I'm just extending it to overall, what is the condition of the house? Okay, yeah. Mr. David. Um, it's been a student house since 1975. It's, it did have some sheetrocking and wiring done about that period of time. It has been, it, it's very poor in the interior. Um, the roof is leaked. Um, there's the bathrooms are, were replaced in about 1975. They had some sheetrock, but no installation of to speak of. I'm sure there's been mice and rodents and mold and everything else that goes along with these wonderful old structures. Um, so, in my opinion, like I said, also being a builder and different things, there's um, we're trying to be, trying to make things more environmentally friendly we're trying to create things that are safer for community to live in um, and these old homes this old home does not create that the windows are too small by code um, you know it, it's not a um, it, you know, sometimes these things do need, need to go on and change I uh, thank you very much for saying that we take good care of our exterior of our properties. I do appreciate that very much and the plantings and different things. And we do try to continue to do that. And we feel, like I said, we've been part of Amherst for a long, almost a century. Um, and we would like to continue to do that. Okay, thank you. Um, Robin, I 
is your hand, I think, is up. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. just had a quick, quick question. Um, it, just regarding the interior, I think what you're suggesting, your my question would be that it sounds like the interior uh, of the structure does not reflect uh, the original historical floor plan or any original bathroom or kitchen or anything like that. That you would not know it was a historic farmhouse if you went into the interior. That that is correct. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, so we still have those choices before us. Um, I guess I guess I'd ask you to sort of think about is it is it the history of the property that we're wanting to know more about, or are we satisfied on that point? Um, now that we've had uh, a look at it, discussion and information from the owner, are we, you know, do we prefer to take another course with either approving the demolition permit or not? Um, Jane, I think um, given the, I think I'm, I'm going to make a motion to allow for the demolition and see what the commission wants to vote on that. And my feeling about that is just without um, the context of any farmland and um, the deteriorated state of the roof and some of the changes that I can see, I think um, there's just not enough integrity there to warrant mm -hmm. delaying the demolition but um, that would be my motion. So to approve the demolition um, and if I have a second, we could vote from there. Okay, um, Becky. Oh, I'm sorry, you're muted. I would like to second that now, okay. that motion of Robbins. All right, thank you. Um, is there any further discussion? Hetty or Pat? No. Jane, did you want to weigh in at all? <laughs> I'm always curious what you think. <laughs> uh, you know, it's I, I, um, it tugs at our heart a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it does. It does. And yeah. um, I, uh, in in general, I think it's um, easier to. I mean, there, there are instances where it's very clear that something has um, really foundational historic significance. And then other times where, you know, you kind of have to almost inhabit an idea or inhabit a space to understand whether it has integrity or not. But I, I, mm -hmm. I, think, the, I think the points about its um, kind of the... Rem the lack of the lack of any evidence that it was sort of instrumental in the fairground or the racetrack uh, you know that that I think that's an important point and it's sort of dislocation from an agricultural an identifiable agricultural past um, I think is a good one uh, my, I mean, I think it is an absolutely charming uh, appearance. Um, I do, it does matter to me what, I mean, even though our role is to think about, you know, the exterior and the presence of the structure in our town landscape, um, I think it does make a difference that you know, there's some losses in the interior. Um, so I think it's, I think it's fine for us to have found a criterion that uh, where we think there is some significance. Um, we, I think one of our options is to, um, is to make sure that that 
the historical commission helps to document the, the structure. Um, so I, you know, I think documentation is, uh, you know, that's kind of the, it, in a way it's a bit of a partner to a, a demolition permit to, to right. proceeding in that direction. Um, so that's what I think. Um, Pat. Yes, I'm, I'm curious as to whether there's a mattress filed on that property because that would follow up if it's not. I, I would like to suggest that that happen um, as part of the demolition um, approval, mm -hmm. that, 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 the, the, that the house be properly recorded in MACRIS. Yeah, ben, can I amend my motion to yep. include that? Okay, so amended. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, Becky, I think you had made a second. Would you like to right. second? Yes, so, so seconded. All right, thank you. <laughs> All right, I think we're ready to come to a vote. Um, so I will begin with Pat Hall. Um, I approve, agree. Uh, Becky Lockwood. I approve. Hetty Startup. Yes, I approve. Robin <clears throat> Fordham. In favor, yes. And Jane Wald in favor. So, um, all right, so the basic outcome is that um, we are, you know, approving the demolition permit on condition that there's an opportunity to document the, the house uh, descriptively and photographically um, and submit a... Uh, 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 gather information for a um, macros filing. And so Jane, my question is who will be responsible for that? Excellent question. Um, I think so our, um, we know, so first of all, I'm just gonna ask if anyone here on the commission uh, would like to put some time into this because we know how much Ben has on his plate. <laughs> um, I would be willing to volunteer for that. What's Robin. my time? Yeah, what is my, what's the timeline for that? I'm sure that the owners are eager to have yeah, that. I mean, we, we have the uh, Jim, uh, or maybe it was Michael Schaefer shared uh, quite a few pictures of the property. So, um, Obviously, that that's something we would need before it's demolished. Um, so we have the pictures um, to work with, and then you know maybe given Jim's history with the property, if he you know wanted to add anything to the our, our historical significance, might be able to pick his brain for little tidbits about the history of the property and um, and work from there to build a description architecturally and historically. So I think it could happen pretty pretty quickly. Okay. I, I kind of doubt that, well, I don't really know. I mean, yeah, I did kind of doubt that there's Sanborn maps for mm. that area. Yeah. Um, so a lot of it really, I think, is just sort of collecting the, the historical research. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, Robin. That's terrific. Okay. Yeah. So we are, uh, we've concluded that hearing and we'll need to move smartly through the next one. Um, Jan. Um, not since I wanted to wait till after the vote, I just wondered if I could suggest one thing and ask Mr. David if he would consider taking the look, um, the, the position, the porch of the house into account when designing the new buildings. Um, if maybe the one that replaces the house could have some of the same characteristics, so would, you'd get some of that same charm as you came around the corner and saw the new structures rather than having them all exactly the same. It's just an idea of a way to kind of hold on to that um, historical impression and um, record the look of the farmhouse from that period that is so um, amherst. Just an idea. Okay, thank you, Jan. Um, I think Mr. David can take that, take away that suggestion. Um, and um, let's see, whatever, 
sort of officialness now needs to happen with the decision, then you will you will help Mr. David with that. Or Correct. Yeah. So we'll we'll move the permits along, and then I'll be in touch about the um, historical uh, inventory form. So thanks for uh, coming tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we will now uh, open a public hearing for um, 37 North Pleasant Street, which is parcel 14A49, a request from Barry Roberts. Uh, this is a continuation of a, uh, of a hearing opened on April 20th, 2022. And it's a request for the full demolition of a circa 1900 wood frame two-story commercial building on North Pleasant. Um, so this, this property has come up before the Historical Commission earlier, at which time um, the commission uh, approved a demolition permit. However, that, has, that permit has expired uh, and according to the bylaw, we need to uh, revisit this property. Um, and I believe the mid minutes of that meeting were included in uh, the meeting materials. So, um, okay, so uh, having sort of described our process already. I'm going to move immediately to asking Mr. Roberts if you have any other um, <clears throat> comments or other in information that you'd like to share with us. Uh, I don't think so. I think that uh, you made reference to uh, when I was before you in March of 21, um, and you found that this was not a significant historic structure and you granted a demo permit. Uh, since then, of course, the pandemic happened and our things stalled on our end. And so the building inspector said that I need to come back to you people to reestablish a demo permit. So that's why I'm back. Okay, thank you. Oh, Ben, anything new or further that you'd like to comment on? Um, no, no new information. Um, what Mr. Roberts shared was correct in terms of the process. The, the demolition permit was granted, but then the uh, permit expired and, and thus required a new application for a demolition permit. And so that triggered the Article 13 demolition delay process. Um, and but yeah obviously no no new findings for the building that weren't at the original hearing i, I do have the slideshow that i shared if folks want to see i know um becky was not on the commission at the time mm, right in Mar march 2021 um, yeah maybe we could look quickly at that um yeah. take, uh, so just jan, jan's question first and then we can go through the, the slide mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jan, do you have, is there something? Oh, I was just going to say, what about if I move that we renew the permit and then we discuss um, as part of the motion? Uh, oh, that, well, why don't you do that immediately after the quick, quick slideshow? So, okay. so, so Becky can see what we're yeah, talking about. Yeah, just so we know what we're talking yeah, about. It's it the yeah. red outline, the typewriter. It's the typewriter shop and um, this small wooden building, McMurphy's and the Amherst Boys and Girls. Uh, it's not the, uh, the upstairs is vacant now, actually. But it, um, And then here, I just kind of found pictures through, yeah. through time. Um, it's circa 1900, um, but you know, it shows up here in 1890, wow. 1895, 1910. You can see how North <laughs> Pleasant Street changes over time, trolley tracks. Um, and yeah, you can see it in, in an aerial from 1946. You know, at one point it was mm -hmm. where McMurphy's was, was an older drinking establishment. Um, 
Yeah. And yeah, this is just some information about the uh, this, the Amher Central Business District, which it, the, this building is not included within. Okay, yeah, thank you for that run through. Um, let's see. Oh, I see Jan's hand up. Is there, would you like to make a motion? Sorry, it was still up, but sure. <laughs> I move we renew the permit that we granted two years ago. I, I second that. Okay, thank you, Jan and Henny. Uh, any further discussion? So essentially, it's just, uh, it would be a new demolition permit, I guess. So it's just, you're, you're voting to grant a demolition um, permit. Okay. I, I move we grant another demolition. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, thanks for that clarification, Ben. Um, Let's see, seeing no discussion, um, we will go to a vote. Um, oh, uh, do you want to maybe take public comment? Oh, oh, yes, yeah. thank no, you. I, thank I you. almost forgot to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, is there any public comment on demolition, uh, uh, granting a demolition permit for 37 North Pleasant Street? All right, seeing none, then um, all right, there are just so many procedural steps. I think we have to close the public hearing. Do you need a motion? Yes. So we first need we need we need Jan to withdraw her motion. Oh okay. <laughs> Thank you. Robin. <laughs> I moved to close the public hearing. Second. <laughs> Thanks so much. Um, all in favor? Bye. Raise your hand. And we will take a voice from Hetty. Okay, Hetty, raise your hand. All right, unanimous. All right, now, is there a, uh, a motion concerning the permit, demolition permit? I once again move that we grant a demolition permit for this property. A second. Again. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, all right. On this, we'll do a, a roll call, and I will begin with Robin Fordham. In favor. Uh, Patricia Auth. In favor. Uh, Becky Lockwood. In favor. And Jan Marquart. Yes. And Hetty Startup. Yes. Very good. Jane Wald is yes as well. All right. So that's passed unanimously. And uh, thanks, uh, thanks, Barry, for coming back. And um, we wish you wish you much much success with your project. <clears throat> yeah, and ba Barry's yeah. actually going to stick around for I think two other projects, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Aren't you lucky? Okay. Um. All right, so we are going to open a public hearing for uh, 164 Sunset Avenue, parcel 11C9 uh, uh, from Fearing Sunset uh, LLC. This is a request to demolish um, the breezeway and garage and relocate the remaining circa 1942 wood frame single family house to a parcel in the town of Hadley. Uh, so with our, um, our procedures, we have uh, information provided uh, in advance. And um, so Barry, is there anything you'd like to, anything in addition you'd like to share with us? Yes, I think uh, when we met with a local historic, uh, uh, group about our uh, wanting to uh, build a new project at the corner of Ferring and Sunset and knowing that these two houses would be compromised. Uh, their request of us was to see if we could possibly save both houses, 164 and its neighbor, 174. So uh, we have been able to find We'll talk about 164. I was not able to find two lots in the town of Amherst. I mm -hmm. found one lot, which 174 is the next hearing we're going to talk about. It's going to, I could not find two lots 
in town of Amherst to move. So we found a lot in Hadley to take 164 to, and I thought that was more appropriate house to move out of a historic district than 174, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, in order to be able to move the house, we need to take down the breezeway and garage because it'd be way too wide to go down the street. So that's mm. basically what we're asking to do. Okay, okay, thank you. And great, Ben, thanks for putting up the photos. Mm -hmm. Yep, and so 164 is at the top, 174 is at the bottom. So we're talking about the White House right now. All right, and the it's this house that is uh, going uh, to a place in Hadley, all right. Um, and Ben, anything you'd like to add? Um, I guess I'll just add that for these two properties, the local historic district commission um, has reviewed them quite closely um, and both gave appro both gave approval for um, the relocation of both properties. Um, of both houses and actually for, uh, for 174 because the receiving parcel is within the historic district they have already approved the uh, uh, the, the the new location for the for the for 174 Sunset Ave um, but for for both they have uh, granted authorization for the for the relocation okay thank you um let's see are there questions from or comments or observations from commission members and hetty i see your hand up sorry sorry jane it's um an old hand okay all right all right then um uh, at this time i'll invite public comment Oh, Becky, did you, was that a hand of yours? No, okay. Um, so uh, inviting public comment. Then um, is there a motion to close the public hearing? I give a motion to close the public hearing. Thank you, Pat. And a second. Second. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, all in favor uh, for this, we'll just do a hand raise. Um, okay, Hetty, I see your hand. Mine, Becky's, Robin, Pat, and Jan. Okay, so unanimously, we're closing the public hearing. Um, this I mean, obviously this is um, a structure within, they're moving on to the, the criteria for significance. This is a structure within a, a local historic district and within a, um, I think this is outside the National Register District. Is that correct, Ben? Um, I'll have to check on that quickly. Hold on. Um, that is correct. All right, then. Um, so then we are down to historical, architectural, and geographical significance. Are there any concerns about historical importance in light of what we know uh, of what's happening with the house? Um, any comments about architectural importance? And any comments about geographical importance? And of course, since it's moving from its geography, that may be the one uh, to wonder about. Any comments? Uh, All right. Are, 
Oh, <laughs> sorry. I was going to ask if they were um, uh, established and familiar visual features of the neighborhood. Does anybody have any comment on that? I'm sorry, I didn't understand what you're asking me. Oh, I was actually asking my commission members if they had okay, any. Sorry. On me. That's okay. On the um, an established and familiar visual feature of the neighborhood. Technically, uh, perhaps, but it seems to me that with the owner being willing to recite both of these houses. I don't want to rock the boat. I think it's great that we can come to a solution like this. Oh yeah, no, I, I wasn't disagreeing with that. I was just um, yeah. I mean, procedural. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, but, um, I I agree that 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 the fact that one of them is being moved into the same district maintains that. And I don't know where in Hadley the other one is going, but I'm assuming that it will have a presence wherever it is. Um, and so it's not amorous, but it's 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 um, preserving. It's, right. You no, know, uh, that wasn't really my point. It, I'm just referencing the, the uh, you know the particular definition, but right. It's not a question of of the impact of moving it will have it's sort of whether I, I don't even know that I, I would consider it to have that uh, visual character but I was curious if anybody had any input but I will pass on that yeah I I I, I would not not think that was important under this discussion so then I think we are ready to um, have a motion and we can uh, we can frame the motion with either with reference to the action of the local historic district commission or with reference to appreciation that it's um, moving to another site. Um, so um, if there's a if there's a creative and literary mind out there wanting to compose this motion. <laughs> I see, I see Hetty's hand. I, I think the work and the due diligence has been done here. I, I really am very appreciative of both the local historic district commission and Mr. Roberts for figuring this out um, and uh, coming to a conclusion that seems to be a benefit to a variety of neighborhoods. I can't make a motion, but because I'm too tired and I'm <laughs> but I but that's but that's my thought that we're sort of at that point really to move on. So uh, if I take a gander and a motion that that we approve the plan to to preserve and move the two structures consistent with the recommendation from the local historic district to preserve the structures um, and to, um, I guess, to preserve the structures through the plan. So um, someone edit that for me. Okay, um, I think uh, ben, do we need to make that a motion to approve the demolition permit? Yep, yeah, because there is a pe pending demolition permit. Yeah. Okay. Right, so, so to approve it based on the plan as approved by the local historic district to move the structures so that they be preserved in the process. A second. Then let us, if that works as a motion, Ben. You think that works as a motion, Ben? Yep. 
Yep. Okay. Great. Thank you. So then we will go to a roll call vote, and um, I'll begin with Becky Lockwood. I, I approve. Um, Janet Marquart. Fine with me. Okay. Robin Fordham. In favor. Patricia Off. In favor. Hetty Startup. In favor. And Jane Wald, in favor. So we have a unanimous, uh, a unanimous vote on that. So, um, uh, so thanks, Barry. Um, and obviously, you're sticking around for the next public hearing, which is uh, a public hearing for 174 Sunset Avenue, parcel 11C-299, a request from Fearing Sunset LLC to demolish uh, the back porch and a de detached garage and relocate the remaining circa 1923 wood frame single family house to a parcel located at 46 Fearing Street, which is um, parcel 11C-123 in Amherst. So um, the public hearing is now open. And um, uh, Barry, is there, um, are there other things you'd like to share with us? Uh, I guess I want to explain that why we're asking for this, to move this building with the back porch on it. It's too wide to fit up the street. Uh, to demo the garage, uh, the garage doesn't have much structural integrity, but we intend to build a new garage at 46 Farron, and we will go back before the local historic commission to get approval for the design of that garage, which we will mimic the one we're going to take down. Fantastic. Are you uh, planning to um, add back uh, a porch, or is that not Probably really? not because yeah. of uh, where we're locating it. Uh, the lot has wetlands in the rear. So mm -hmm. to stay away from the wetlands, we don't have a lot of extra breathing room. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, ben, can I see the picture of the house in the garage? Could you share that? Thank you. Which one are we talking about now? The uh, yellow house. Oh, okay. Um, okay. So this picture to the left is taken on Sunset Ave. The one on the right is on uh, Fearing Street, kind of looking at the back of the house. And so, Mr. Roberts, your intention is to recreate a garage akin to the historic one that won't make the that won't make the move. I I I applaud you. I just wrote a paper on detached garages and their history, so. All right. Um, anything, Ben, from you? Nope. Not nothing more to add. Okay. Um, um, are there any comments, other comments or questions from members of the commission? Ben, um, are there any um, members of the public attending who would like to make a comment? Uh, then I, I will, a, a motion to close the public hearing will be very welcome. So moved. Thank you. And a second. Second. Thank you, Pat. Um, all right, a show of hands to close the public hearing. Okay, thank you. That's uh, unanimous to close the public hearing. Um, <clears throat> All right, so we know that this is, uh, we know it's in a local historic district. We know the local historic district commission has already uh, discussed it. It is, oh, help me again, Ben. It is outside. Yeah, it's just outside the National Register District, but it's in the local historic district. Okay. Uh, so um, are there any comments about the historical importance of this structure. 
comments about the architectural importance of the building. And then uh, comments about the geographical importance. In that case, um, is there a motion to uh, approve the demolition permit? I make a motion to approve the demolition permit for the garage and attached breezeway. Second. Okay. Um, just a techni technicality is that I think we have to have a motion for the, well, I'm not sure what stage we're at, Ben. Uh, a motion for the garage, the attached breezeway. Do we, at this moment, do we also need to um, approve the, the um, moving of the structure? Um, correct. Yeah, that's, that's before the commission now is the relocation of the house and then the demolition of the garage and the back porch. So can we amend that uh -huh. um, to, to start with the, the moving of the house, the demolition of the garage and the breezeway? Correct, yeah. Uh, this, this one does not have the breezeway. That was the previous house, right? Oh, right, yep, it's back porch and garage. It's a back porch, right, sorry. Okay. Okay, uh, and a friendly amendment for me is just comma with appreciation for the consideration by the mm -hmm. local historic district commission and the owner's um, uh, efforts to preserve the structure. Great. Okay. <clears throat> then- need a second? Um, I'll second when yeah. you don't have one. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then let's see. Let's go to a vote with starting with Hetty. Whoops. Muted. Sorry, I was muted. I approve it. Thank you. You know, that's so interesting. I heard you without your little red mute thing disappearing. Oh, I think you've, I think you've conquered Zoom. Um, <laughs> Becky Lockwood. I approve. Uh, Janet Marquardt. Fine with me. Robin Fordham. In favor. And Patricia Off. In favor. Shane Wald in favor. All right, so that is unanimous. Uh, so again, thank you, Barry, for all your efforts to keep Amherst history going. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Barry. Um, so I believe we've come to the end of our uh, demolition hearings. And then now we move to uh, a presentation discussion of um, the Jones Memorial Library. Um, let's see, this is a public hearing as well. So, Correct. right, okay. So um, a public hearing to uh, consider uh, our responsibility to fulfill sections 3.1 and 3.2 of the preservation restriction agreement between the trustees of the Samuel Minot Jones Memorial Library and the town of Amherst um, is uh, open. Uh, so let's see, we have, um, I believe we have representatives of the library with us who would like to, uh, whom we will invite to make a, to make a presentation or comment on, on their proposal. Hi, everybody. Hello. Hi. Welcome. Thank you for having us. Um, well, my name is Sharon Cherry. I'm the director of the Jones Library. And with me are George Hicks Richards. Uh, he's the Jones Library's facility supervisor. And Jane Bryden is from the Kestrel Land Trust. 
I didn't know if I do have a quick PowerPoint because I just love a good PowerPoint. Is it okay if I share my screen? Or Ben, do you want to do that? Uh, no, I'm happy for, for you to if you'd like. Okay. Okay. Awesome. So we are here because starting next spring or summer, uh, our backyard, the Jones Library's backyard, is going to turn into a, a bit of a construction zone uh, due to the library's expansion and renovation project. So because of the project and the resulting loss of plantings, the Kestrel Land Trust is proposing to move many of the plantings to a new site still located uh, in, in, in Amherst. And um, Jane can talk more about this. It'll be in, in the southern part of Amherst. In order to maintain the integrity of the Kinsey Memorial Garden, we would like that as many of the plants and hardscape as possible to be relocated. In order to accomplish this goal, the land trust uh, hired a professional to uh, come in and prune the roots of the items that will be moved. And then in the fall, the same professional will come back and perform the, the transplants. The fundraising will occur to ensure that the project is paid for. And then once the plants have been moved, um, we will make the backyard safe. Uh, in other words, we'll fill in the holes, um, but it's not going to be pretty, is, is my guess. Uh, we, we won't be investing in additional resources and, and until the time is right. Um, landscaping will be a part of design development, but the capital campaign uh, is going to be a key component of this project. So once... Um, you know, what our landscape is, go is going to look like in the future is, is really yet to be determined. Uh, but as you all know, you'll be seeing a lot of us in the upcoming uh, year as part of this project, not only for the landscaping, but also for the building. I have some photos I'd like to share with you uh, of what the, our backyard has looked like over time. So here on the screen are the original landscaping plans. Here is a pretty cool picture of what the backyard looked like in the 1920s. Here is the Kinsey plan of uh, the Kinsey Memorial Library uh, Garden. Uh, and that dates back to 1999. So the Kinsey Memorial Garden is only 23 years old or so. And fast forward to 2016, here is our existing site plan, which was completed by Berkshire Design Group as part of our uh, expansion project. And uh, this is a map of today's proposal. It, it, it's in your packet. Uh, so numbered are all the plants that the Kestro will be moving. And then here is a rendering of what the library's backyard could look like in 2025, um, you know, after all is said and done. And we'll all have to just stay tuned to see what that ends up looking like. That's my brief, that's my brief spiel. I'm happy to show the pictures again for a longer period of time or just answer questions. Um, Jane certainly, uh, and George know way more than I do about what's there now and, and about the logistics of, of moving this garden. Thank you, thank you, Sharon. Um, so I, I'd like to invite uh, George Hicks Richards to make any comments you would like to about uh, particulars that uh, that you're involved with and can share with us. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, again, my name is George Hicks Richards. I'm the facilities supervisor for the Jones. Um, I just think this is an incredible opportunity to uh, preserve Carol Pope's vision uh, 
in a way that we would not be able to do uh, given the construction project itself. Uh, and I would just add that, you know, the Kinsey Garden encompasses the back of the Jones Library, everything that is in the front and the side near the strong historic house uh, is not considered the Kinsey Garden itself. So everything that would be moved is not visible from Amity Street, um, nor on, from Pleasant Street. Uh, so, so yeah, I mean, I just think it's a great opportunity. I think that everything that, uh, that they're hoping to preserve, uh, they've taken a lot of uh, very careful thought as to what can be transplanted and what will thrive in the new location. Uh, so I think overall, it's it's a really good plan. And I'm just happy that a lot of this is going to be able to be preserved versus not preserved. Okay. Thank you. Um, let's see. Um, I'd also like to invite Jane Bryden to comment on uh, perhaps selection of plant materials um, that will be moved and those that won't be moved. Um, Jane, I don't know if you're trying to speak with us, but you're muted. Is that, is that better? Yes. Yes. Okay, sorry. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I have been on this project idea for about a year with Carol Pope and some other garden enthusiasts who are um, connected with the Kestrel Trust. And we thought it would be wonderful to move as many plants as we can yeah to the Kestrel Trust and we have a new home in South Amherst. I don't know how many of you have seen that or know about it, but it's a beautiful spot above a seven acre pond. It's down near Atkins Farms across the, the way near the Holyoke Range. And so we just thought it would be a wonderful thing to move these beautiful plants to a new location that is still valued by the town of Amherst, the Kestrel Trust and the Jones Library being two important factions of the town and that we could preserve the beauty and the love of these plants that Carol has spent so many years um, nurturing and, and watching over. We won't be able to take all of them because some of them are just too big to move, but and we, we, have, we hope we have a person to do the work. Um, the pruning, the spring pruning has not been done yet, but I, we partly wanted to wait until this meeting was, gave approval, but also uh, we hope to have it, the pruning done by before Memorial Day. And then um, to move the plants that we're going to take in the fall. Thank you. Um, very helpful. Thank you all for your um, explanations and comments. Uh, so let's see. Um, ben, do you have anything to anything more to share with us about this? Um, I have. I don't have anything else to share about the you know history of the garden or the um, logistics. I guess maybe when the time is right, I can explain a bit about the preservation restriction. Good. Good. Um, uh, questions from commission members about the proposal? I, I think it's a good proposal, but I, I think we need to hear from Ben how it, it interfaces with the preservation restrictions. This doesn't fall under the 50 year category, but it is something because of the preservation um, restrictions that comes to us. Right, yeah. Correct, yeah. Um, and as I understand it, the, the preservation restriction is uh, upon the building and the property, but uh, references of, to restrictions on the property are scant in the 
and the restrictions. So I, I will leave that to Ben. But um, I, my one question is um, that uh, Carol Pope has been involved in the planning for the move. Yes, she has very much so. Very one. much so. Okay. Yeah. That's good to know. She's she's really thrilled at the prospect of having her plan move, and so that the memorial to her late husband David will continue. Kestrel will keep an area that will be designated as part of this memorial garden still. It won't be the same, obviously, you know, but. Yeah. yeah, it's such a wonderful array of plant material. It's yeah, they're beautiful. Nice to, nice to know that they're going together. And the, they would be destroyed if we don't take them. <laughs> so that's why this idea came into being. Um, so are there any, if there are no other, are there any other comments or questions from commission members? I just have a quick question um, and it may be premature, uh, but for the, the plantings that aren't going to Kestrel, um, is there any thought from the library, um, friends of the library, if there could be some kind of auction of plant or fancy plant sale um, that would help with, you know, buying certain kinds of books for the library or honoring um, the landscape of downtown Amherst. Or I, I have no clue really what that would look like, but um, I was at the library today and I love being in the Jones Library and I'm so excited to see so much going on in the interior of the library in terms of getting comments about what's going to happen and there were models of the whole site and it just started to feel like there was a sort of momentum building um, for this big undertaking and um, knowing Carol Pope's own garden um, you know I would be thrilled to buy to dig up you know a little a little patch of, you know, vinca or something and take it to my garden and say, yeah, this came from the Jones Library or something. I, I, I really have no clue as to whether that's logistically something that's practical or, but I'll leave it at that. <laughs> no, I, uh, Hedy, I love, thank you so much for that comment. It's beautiful. Um, and, and when you talk about the momentum, Yes, it's absolutely here. Uh, so our capital campaign committee is really very much in like this quiet phase uh, of their process. And I absolutely think that fundraising um, for landscaping, it, it will absolutely be a key part of their uh, campaign. And I think the sky's the limit. So um, the, the plans haven't been set yet, uh, but that certainly, um, is a it, there's an opportunity there and i was just going to say that the amherst garden club is also enthusiastically involved in this project and this move so um yeah it's a good idea to get more and more people involved with it thank you all um Let's see, I, at this point, I will ask for public comment. And wonder if there are any attendees who wish to address the commission. All right, very well. Um, then, is there a, a motion to close this public hearing? Can I so move? Thank you. And a second. I second. Thank you. Thanks, Jan and Pat. And then we'll take a just a, a visual hand raise uh, in favor of closing uh, the hearing. That is unanimous. Uh, and then we'll um, turn to deliberation of the Historical Commission, beginning with a brief from Ben about the preservation restriction. Great, 
thanks. Yeah, so the just to clarify the restriction um, that is uh, has been signed by the commission and the trustees uh, and the state at this point. So it's in effect, which is a big hurdle for everyone. Um, the just a little bit about the mechanics, the um, restriction is on the property and the building. Um, however, the, you know, building is really defined as the uh, 1928, you know, original uh, library building. Um, and so that's kind of like the historic resource that is, um, I guess, protected by the uh, restriction or preserved by the restriction. Um, under, I think on the second to last page, Appendix F of the his, uh, preservation restriction, it goes through different types of uh, alterations that are ones that are minor and are just considered routine maintenance and don't need to go before the Historical Commission. And then there's uh, an outline for alterations that are considered major and therefore need to come before the Historical Commission um, for approval. And so the, um, the action of, uh, you know, removing a, a garden or, you know, garden features um, fall, falls under that major category, which is why we're uh, here today present, you know, having the library come to a public hearing and get approval for the uh, uh, relocation or transplant of the Kinsey garden. Um, and so the you know they would be seeking your approval under the restriction for that action um, and but i guess just to clarify the obviously as sharon alluded to the kinsey garden um was from 19 i think she said 1993 or so or, or thereabouts um so isn't you know specifically called out in the preservation restriction um but is you know still part of the property that is defined um, so it's a little bit confusing, but that's essentially the, the outline of the kind of what we're reviewing today. Hey, thank you. I, you know, just speaking <clears throat> personally from, well, not personally, professionally from <laughs> my Dickinson Museum experience, this exhibit F, the uh, standard restriction guidelines is sort of, you know, it's, with a preservation restriction, you almost begin to kind of breathe this stuff about um, the distinction between major and minor alterations. Uh, and it's, it, I mean, I'm always just, I'm really kind of fascinated by these distinctions. And, um, and I'm fortunate that I work at a place where all of my goals are the same goals as the uh, preservation restriction. So, um, <clears throat> sorry about that little digression, but uh, um, so uh, we're open for discussion. By, by commission members. So, um, any questions, concerns, uh, need for clarification of the, of the deed restriction. Um, Jan. Um, I would just like to say, I think it's a wonderful solution. Um, I don't think it's gonna affect the 1920 portion of the building um, disproportionately. And that, you know, eventually I'm sure it will be landscaped again, even if it's less densely. Um, and I don't see why we wouldn't support it. I think it's a great idea, great plan. I, I agree with Jan. I think it's an eloquent solution to what was, was a private donation and not part of the historic um, landscaping of the, of the original building. Um, and so I think that the Kestrel Trust is, is certainly um, someone we can put our faith in to preserve the, the plants that they've chosen. And the public is invited to many activities at the Kestrel Trust new setting. I've been there once. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it will, you know, the, the honor 
to the person that the original garden was made to honor will continue. And I'd like to say that there will certainly be a marker that continues the Memorial Garden at Kestrel Trust. That will be, it will be noted for the, when the plants are put in there. That's wonderful. I, uh, I echo uh, what Jan and Pat have said about um, what a wonderful plan and thoughtful plan and um, really one directed toward saving what's essential about the original intent and how that intent has blossomed over these decades. Um, no pun intended, but um, I mean, I think it's admirable and uh, just speaks to a wonderful partnership that um, has evolved and found a most productive <laughs> and mutually beneficial solution. So I think it's fantastic. Then, um, let's see. Then, do we, let's see, so our, uh, our procedural uh, action right now is to approve the plan, the, approve the proposed plan, uh, or Ben, is there some other wording that is necessary? Um, that's my understanding, yeah, it's uh, approve the plan as, as presented today. Um, to relocate the garden. Okay. All right. Well, I, you know, I seldom do this. I'll make a motion to uh, approve the plan for the relocation of the Kinsey Memorial Garden as presented. Second. Thank you. Uh, any further discussion? No. Okay, then we'll come to a vote. Uh, uh, Patricia Auth. In favor. Uh, Robin Fordham. In favor. Becky Lockwood. In favor. Uh, Janet Marquardt. Fine with me. <laughs> That's easy to be my thing tonight, sorry. In favor, yes, whatever. <laughs> you should stick with fine with me, uh, at least for tonight. Uh, Hetty Startup. In favor. And Jane Wald in favor. All right. Well, um, I think we're, uh, so we're unanimous in that approval. Uh, we appreciate your coming this evening to the Historical Commission to share this plan with us and um, uh, admire all the work that's gone into uh, coming to this outcome. Thank you all so much. Your comments are really awesome. Thank you. Have a great night. Thank you very much. You too. Yeah, thank, you. thank you all. Yeah. Great. Um, all right. Let's see. So I think we are now at uh, items. Yeah. Unannounced. Made it, made it through not, the public not hearing. Antici yeah. Not anticipated. Yeah. Um, are there, Ben, do you have anything to? I was just going to add, I guess the first item on the, is the, on the, for the public meeting is the uh, preservation plan update. And I was just going to let folks know that um, Nate Malloy, myself, and Chris Brestrup met with Shannon Walsh uh, in person, which was nice um, uh, mm -hmm. last week or two weeks ago uh, to kind of kick off the preservation plan process. Um, uh, Shannon and I then I probably spent an hour driving around Amherst and kind of gave her a tour of the the, the highlights for the um, you know pre preservation plan and you know historical sites around town. Um, so she you know work is underway. Um, Shannon's first few steps are to uh, look at some other towns preservation plans and then to kind of review the R two thousand five plan carefully um, and then kind of work from there to 
um, begin talking with the historical commission, with the local historic district commission um, about setting priorities and goals. Um, and then, you know, in terms of actual content, she's going to be looking into um, kind of the history of Amherst, that, that section from the 2005 plan, but then kind of trying to fill in the gaps within there, both, um, you know, specifically looking at underrepresented populations, um, African American, uh, Irish Americans, indigenous populations, trying to in integrate that history into the narrative, which is obviously yeah. very important. Um, and but we don't we're not asking her to rewrite the whole section. I think we want to have her focus her time on strategies and goals and um, implementation, you know, the implementation matrix we had talked about. So uh, don't want her to get bogged down in that, but kind of that's that's the work outline for the next few weeks or months, probably. Um, she is interested in coming to the next uh, commission meeting. Um, so I will let her know um, the date. And I guess, Jan, you weren't here when we set the <laughs> meeting date, but we um, decided on June 22nd, uh, Wednesday. So I hope that works because we continued the hearing for that date, so. Um, but yeah, our- Fine with me. Okay. So unless there's any questions or comments, I guess we'll just kind of wait to talk to Shannon at that point. Maybe I can come up with a few, uh, you know, I think it, the, the meeting with Shannon next month will really just be a, a first in a series of meetings, so. You know, there will be other opportunities to discuss goals and priorities um, and and get more feedback. But uh, so I don't I guess it'll just kind of be an introduction next next month. That's good. Great news. Yeah, we're excited. Thanks, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Jan. I'm wondering, um, Ben, whether this might be a good thing to start to sort of um, mm. chronicle in the newspaper, the process, the fact that oh, yeah. we set her to work on this. And, you know, we're trying to raise awareness uh, with the town of what we do and that people own historic properties and we don't want them to be neglected and stuff. So maybe it might be a nice way to kind of segue into some of those things by talking about this process of identifying stuff. I don't know. Is there somebody that could you could ask them if they would have a sort of semi-regular feature like every six months or something on how it's going or I don't know, or aspects of it that might be interesting for the town own, uh, homeowners to know or, you know, or barn owners to know. Um, well, my first thought was just to do a press release, you know, saying that we're, you know, underway with the preservation plan and, uh, you know, whether or not the Gazette would pick it up, we can at least post that you are like in the news category for the town. Yeah. Um, and but, uh, yeah. what's the name of the person in town hall now? She does all the kind of... Yeah, Brianna does all Brianna, the yeah. communications. Yeah. yeah, maybe she could do something with it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's just, it, I, I would like to think that at some point we're going to get to where we are much more transparent and proactive in our media outreach to the town so that when we say things like your house is 75 years old or mm -hmm. almost there since that number has been changed watch out you know and we want you to keep it in good shape and don't tear your bar down or whatever that they they see it coming it isn't out of the blue you know that this has been something that we've been keeping the town abreast of is there how does everybody feel about that oh I think it's a great idea. I think it's really important. And I have just a little bit more to say about that later. But um, yeah, I think uh, I think we've been struggling with this kind of transparency and this ability to communicate, especially with um, property owners. And uh, so I'm all for it. Great. Not to give you something else to do, Ben, but Okay. Maybe you can hand it over to Brienne and we can, you know, help her understand what we're doing or what's important about that or something. Becky? 
Oh, just to add to that, we had talked about getting the word out about CPA funding. And that goes along nicely with, you know, letting people know that there is some help there, not just that we're going to hold them to certain standards. Um, yeah, maybe. That's, I think that's a good point. And I think what we've, what we are, something that we need to think through a bit more is um, how the CPA committee or commission, I can't remember if it's a committee or commission, uh, and the town council are thinking about CPA fund priorities for historic preservation. Um, I think, I think, uh, I, I, I'm not certain that we're all on the same page about that. So, uh, yeah, I wouldn't want to promise anything that won't be supported yeah. at the higher level. Yeah. It, although, you know, the, I mean, yeah, the historical commission has been wanting to, open CPA funds to private owners. Um, I'm not sure that the CPA committee is. Well, they were two years that. ago. Remember they were the ones two years ago who sent out to all the districts that they wanted people to know about it and apply. Yeah. I think it's town council that's got cold feet right now, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, maybe Hetty or Robin, maybe you could comment on this. I, I feel like I'm like a couple of steps removed, but I just know that this year there's been a bit of what, what do you, what are you wanting to do? Well, I mean, from my perspective, uh, what happened this year was that private owners. I mean, there are a lot of things that people don't understand, like they don't understand what the public benefit is. They don't understand that you don't have to be able to access the interior of a building to have a public benefit. They don't understand that. So, yeah, some, you know, deferred maintenance issues with old historic houses, you know, are going to cost more to maintain the integrity of the building. You're going to have a big ticket item. I think probably what surprised people it wasn't so much on the CPA committee. It, it was once it got to the finance committee that okay. because those two projects were so big, you know, I think they're fine with the $10,000 project for a church. And, you know, I don't know how much the stained glass windows were, but it was um, the dollar amount that seemed to raise everyone's sense of like, oh, is this what we want to be funding? But from my perspective, the CPA committee is supposed to vote uh, as a slate. And if there's a question of, you know, we have other projects that we need CPA funds for, that has to be presented at the CPA committee level so that the committee can decide, well, you know, do we want to hold money in reserve? And if we do, which of these projects do we want to hold back? So, you know, pickleball would have been an easy project to hold back this year as opposed to two historic houses that are continuing to deteriorate. And that's, you know, they look, I, I, we're still not at the finish line with them, right? Is that right, Ben? We're, has town council approved? They have, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, so, you know, it's just having, I think it's just having somebody to, kind of consistently be able to consistently follow you know in the years that I've been on the committee it, it had never happened before but there was well I mean of course the Jones Library was a huge amount of money but that you know the public benefit for that is so obvious you know so you just get into the weeds with all these definitions and kind of procedural things and I don't know if it um I don't know if it oops, I think I froze for a second there I don't know if it had anything to do with um I think it was both the, the, the big ticket item and just having these different types of projects that are not, not like 
you know, so much of it is so much of all of the stuff is like, do I like it or do I don't I like it? <laughs> you know, do I like giving money to a condo yeah. association or don't I? Do I like the building that they're saving or don't I? <laughs> As opposed to, you know, what are the definitions of the programs and, you know, what are the proper procedures? And, and so it, it might just have been the fluke of the year that it became kind of more of an issue. Well, maybe CPA is something that could be saved for closer to a deadline for that. But just to start media coverage of what we're doing, I think that the preservation plan is a good way to ease into it. And I'd like, you know, I think I'd like to suggest that it is covered as much as possible in our news. Yeah. Oh, but I would say actually that, yeah, getting, I would agree that getting the word out for CPA because um our applicants really need to come meet with us much sooner in the process that you know so far the process has been the word goes out and people rush to get an application in with um estimates from people you know in a two-week period and we don't get the um you know the most thorough applications that we could and we don't get to address issues like we would like to do beforehand we'd like people to come to the historical commission before they submit their CPA proposal. So that would be helpful to get that word out beforehand. Yeah, I, perhaps, but I would see that as a separate, a separate topic, a separate subject for yeah. news. And I mean, it might be parallel, but I don't think it's wrapped up in this same um, item, the preservation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good, good discussion. Um, yeah, this is this is important for the future of the Historical Commission. And uh, speaking of that, um, uh, there's a an item about Historical Commission membership that I need to uh, note. And um, uh, one. One thing is that Catherine Davis has had to step away from the Historical Commission because of needing to relocate. Oh. Um, so that's a, that's a sad loss. <clears throat> um, the second thing is that um, I am terming out as of June 30th. And uh, so our next meeting will be my last. And that means there needs to be consideration of um, a new uh, commission chair and vice chair. Uh, and, and now, Ben, as, as we now realize, perhaps <laughs> supplementing the membership of the commission. Uh, so uh, I just wanna uh, put those things out there and uh, ask you to sort of consider what you, you know, for um, leadership uh, for the commission. Uh, so we'll need two people. We'll need one to replace you and one to replace Catherine. Um, otherwise we're at full capacity right now. Yeah, Correct. But, you yeah, know, yeah. we had been, we had been uh, under capacity, uh, you know, through the pandemic. Right, yeah. Uh, I think at least one other person would be, uh, necessary. Um, two other pers persons would be ideal. Um, yeah. So Jane, does the town um, do any advertising or, or invitation to apply for the historical commission? They do. They do uh, advertising for um, all the board. all citizen uh, committees and commissions. And I don't recall, I think it might be at a particular time of year. Is that? Mm, so um, that actually, yeah, I just talked to the town manager's office today and there's a, I guess there's a lot of vacancies in town, including um, the local historic district and the historical commission. Oh. So they're gonna be putting out an announcement soon just to advertise. Um, mm -hmm. I often find the, you know, maybe people respond to those broad announcements, but I feel like um, sometimes more, you know, personalized recruitment or uh, helps kind of nudge people to feel like they can do it or they, you know, 
want to or yeah do we have any any contact at in the um preservation program at umass is there anybody there that could be tapped um i only know people from uh, my time in the landscape architecture department, which is slightly affiliated with historic preservation there, but I, um, yeah, I think last time I, maybe I developed an email list where I just kind of blasted out emails to, um, historical society and UMass historical programs. Um, and, you know, sometimes those get lost, but you know, yeah, if, if, if you all have anyone in mind, um, <laughs> that, that sometimes helps. So one thought yeah, is that it, I think in the preservation program or possibly in the landscape architecture program. Okay. I'm not really sure. Anne Marshall is, I think. Yeah. In yeah, there, exactly. And yep. her partner, Mike Hankey was on the historical commission yep. and was chair for a while. Mm -hmm. So Anne might have good context in the preservation program. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, can I just say that I am supposed to go off in 23. So one year after you, Jane, I'm not quite sure why after, since that'll be my eighth year. Um, but I will have to step down in December because next spring, uh, I'm teaching three courses at two institutions, and I, uh, it's going to be more than I can handle. So at the end of this year, I will bow out as well, um, which actually would be a good stagger, maybe. If new people are coming in, then there's six months, and then somebody comes in six months. But um, just to plan ahead a little. OK. Wow. Three courses at two institutions. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> I don't know why you know people are just so persuasive I think I'm really susceptible to flattery I'm learning in late in life <laughs> so don't flatter me to stay on the commission I gotta learn this uh, oh boy well um thanks everyone it, I it, I'm just amazed we got through all these hearings yeah. in the way we did uh, so thank you very much. Uh, thank you, for Jane, for your excellent facilitation. <laughs> so we have, thank you. We have our next meeting, June twenty second at six thirty. Now let's see. Public comment. Aren't we supposed to allow for that? Yep. Yes. yes. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at the agenda. That's all. <laughs> that's right. Uh, we've done so much public comment. I just sort of thought we'd done it, but let's. Is, is there uh, any? Oh, like, I knew Hilda would be there. <laughs> she never lets us down. I wanted to talk about when you were talking about preservation. Am I on? Yes, yeah. yes you're on. Okay. Yeah. yeah um, uh, if we want to be official, just. Give us your name and address and- Oh, oh I'm Hilda Greenbaum and I've been attending all your meetings for a while. <laughs> I'll write them up in the amherstindy.org, which is what I want to give you a plug for. Um, I have discovered that there's a huge ignorance with so many new people in town about local history and local architecture. And I did run a photo essay after Eric Rudoyo's talk of all pictures of the interior of Jones Library. And I'm sort of thinking with regard to your getting the word out on preservation, which is sorely needed, how about, and I'll work with people with it though, uh, a photo essay, I'm thinking maybe about William Fennell Pratt and a couple of his houses or more particularly uh, Roswell Field Putnam because we've got I think 98 houses of Roswell Field Putnam in the town of Amherst and and open people's eyes to what what do you mean when you say historically or architecturally significant have a picture of the house and have a couple of sentences so the people wouldn't have a lot to read but can sort of soak in the idea of what are we trying to preserve what is this heritage because they don't teach art history and they don't teach music and they don't teach any of these 
They don't even teach Henry Wadsworth Longfellow even in the private schools. I, I discover from my grandchildren. They don't know who, you know, local Massachusetts authors are, or Massachusetts painters or whoever. So, so to get down the, into some of the weeds, maybe you, every week we could show a picture of a house or two houses and a couple of sentences of why they are historically important and what are the features of these houses that we want to preserve. Um, I just want to put that out there because I think that would really do a public service. Um, well, we got good readership now on the AmherstMD.org. You know, several thousand people tune into that every single week. Hilda, I think um, people have already commented about things that you've put before us, like the library and the, some of the interior features, because I was looking at the comments today. Um, and that's, that's clear that that's starting, as I said before, to kind of build its own kind of momentum. Um, but I'd love to, I'd love to help you. Um, I would love to have you call me up and go work on it. Okay. I nominate Hilda to take a place on historical commission to replace Catherine. Do you, I, I applied for the historical commission and they don't want any part of me. And my husband had been on twice. Okay. He was back on in the 70s and did the East Street District and, and wrote The Lost Amherst with, with John Martin and a couple of other people, did most of the work on Lost Amherst. And then he was on with Jim Walt again. So, I mean, I've been doing this for 60 years now, one on 62, since I married him. We started this when he bought his house in 1959 in Shrewsbury and saving old houses, so, you know. It's 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 one of the things that I value, but I found other people when you go to rent an old house or sell an old house, people don't get it. If they I want think, new, they want turnkey, yeah. and nobody wants to restore anything. Any, except my son, he saved a lot of old houses. Hilda, I think um, I I will call you up. Um, I'm also just sit, realizing that I'm sitting here in shock that Jane and Jan will like not next year not be on. Our commission and that you know there's one thing that's the history of Amherst and then there's another thing which is the history of the Amherst Historical Commission and the sort of back the kind of institutional I know you don't but I mean I think there's a kind of institutional memory and a kind of facility to be really cons to give things to discern in a way about all of these things that takes time you know, and takes experience. And, and uh, you know, most of the time, I just feel like I'm walking where angels fear to tread, being a commission member. And the idea that not both of you will not be a part of this is just, just so sad <laughs> to me. Um, Eddie, I agree with you. They're guiding lights. And, so and they bring experience that is so valuable. So you know, we'll have accolades to come in the future, but this is stunning news. Well, you all know that you are right now building the experience that, you know, we have built in our own time. Uh, there's gonna be no lack of experience. So yeah. do not fear. Look the old timers that know everything are dying off though. That's the problem. The people who knew things and the people who knew how to do things like jack up a house, they're gone or move a house. I guess some of them are around, but Dick Hicks moved my house. Barry Roberts yeah. is doing a great job at that. Yep, he's found somebody to do it. Yeah, well, all right. Well, thank you, Hilda, for your, uh, for your constant presence and well I try to, preservation well I, I think by putting pictures even of the garage of the across the street from Emily Dick and her, that they want to tear that down gives people an idea of you know we don't want to save everything some things are worth destroying the garage in back of 285 Main Street which was voted allowed to be demolished okay thank you um, so do, is there any more business for us tonight? 
Ben, are there items? I beg your pardon? Is yeah, Ben, are there unanticipated items? Um, I guess I'll just share an update for the CPA projects. The uh, headstone work is underway. I've talked about that. Um, the fence at West Cemetery, which was part of this year's CPA money, the, that bid was just released. Um, we invited a few firms to put in quotes for the new fence. Um, so it's going to match the, the rest of the black iron fence around West Cemetery. And then um, I've been working with Meg Gage to put out the uh, request for quotes for the uh, archaeological work at Mill River. So we hope to have that underway. Um, the, the funds don't become available until July 1st, but um, we can still get someone under contract so they can hit the ground running uh, on July 1st. So um, I think, yeah, that's it. And then the Women's Club, um, I met with them today actually in person and they're uh, uh, excited and um, are you know going to review the grant agreement and uh, didn't see, or they, they did review the grant agreement and didn't see any major issues and are um, seemingly willing to sign it and eager to get to work. Uh, and then the folks at the, and I think Jane, you've been in touch with Catherine Lombardi there to talk about some of the ins and outs of the preservation restriction. Um, uh, it, yeah. <laughs> informally. <laughs> informally, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then... The Conkey House is a little bit, uh, they um, they just have some internal uh, kind of things to work out, I guess, with the board. There's uh, some questions they want to just review the, the restriction a little bit for the further. They, their, their structure, legal structure, is a bit more complicated just because they're a residential and a commercial homeowners association, and there's um some questions just about how the restriction you know the restriction would really just be on the conkey house and would not affect the rest of the condo association um but there's just some question just they need assurance that that would be the case which so they're um we're working on them with that but uh so yeah well I'll keep you updated on that on that uh project as well um hetty just one um bit of new business. I, um, Robin is heading back into town um, from her studies and we were hoping that you would vote her back onto CPA so that I would step down. I, I feel like this year I've kept the seat warm for her um, and I don't know whether it needs to be on the agenda for the next meeting. I do know that the CPA uh, committee is meeting in early June. Um, I'm perfectly willing to go to that meeting as our representative, but I would hope that we could um, smoothly transition back to Robin being our um, representative. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's definitely put it on the agenda because it does need a vote. A vote, so, yeah. yeah. If you open to be the chair, Hetty, that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> you walked right into that one i did <laughs> you know. but i was hoping you'd walk into it yeah. <laughs> i don't think i'll have enough time to get all both feet in so i i wish i wish you could reconsider jan i i think um it would be great i i i, I remember teaching two three courses in two different places and i I don't envy you. Um, I've done it myself in architectural history, and I, <laughs> I wouldn't do it now. And I, and I, I know that um, I need a few more years living in Amherst, you know, just to kind of know. You've been here longer than I have. No, I've only been here five years, oh. barely. Oh. Okay, um, so I've been here eight. It's not a whole lot longer. Yeah. We can have that discussion next month <laughs> yeah yeah maybe we should leave robin off the cpa so she can become chair i mean we need to balance all this <laughs> y'all think about this to think about it robin all good points <laughs> think about it robin <laughs> i vote to adjourn <laughs> all right so okay. one, one last thing i want to uh, that i forgot to say earlier uh about um 
ending my term is that I really do hope that time will allow me to help with projects, yeah. especially mindless data projects. <laughs> 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 if there are those uh yeah uh, you know keep me in mind oh, i'm glad to hear that jane i don't want to lose connection with you <laughs> or jan I'll, I'll be happy after next spring to help with projects too just not until mid-may of next year but um, i'll be happy to in fact if there's mindless data projects that jane and i can do over a bottle of wine send them to us <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah. And if you don't, if you can't think of any, just make something up. Yeah. We'll make make something up. Up. yeah. <laughs> How about if we just start cataloging barns? <laughs> and you and I need to talk about barns, but we can do that over a bottle of wine. Yeah. Absolutely. Let me know when. <laughs> All right. Well, back to Hetty's motion. I second. I second Yay. Okay. It's time to vote not debatable all in mm -hmm. favor yay okay great all right good night everyone thanks good so night. much thank you, thank you all bye.